Can you imagine the sun disappearing for a whole 18 months? Perhaps you can try thinking of a winter void of storms or a summer without heat. Terrible. Yes, that was precisely what happened in the year 536 CE. Undoubtedly, many historians regarded 2020 as one of the worst years in history. This was because of the outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic in 2020, which caused millions of people around the world to lose their lives. However, the awful events in 2020 are nowhere near the catastrophic occurrence recorded in 536. A year of total blackout and enormous famine forced mothers to eat their babies raw to survive. Indeed, 536 was a year of pure terror as many humans wished that they had never been born. But what really happened in the year 536? Why was it the most dreaded year of all time? In this video, we will explore a detailed breakdown of the horrible events that occurred in the year 536, making historians consider it the worst year to be alive. However, before we start, please like and share this video. Also, ensure to subscribe to this channel and click the notification button to get our upcoming videos on exciting topics. Without further delay, let's delve in. The year 536 is considered to be one of the darkest and most mysterious years in recorded history, as it was marked by several significant events that had a profound impact on human civilization. Some of the major events that occurred in the year 536 are The Disappearance of the Sun in 536, there was a massive volcanic eruption, which is believed to have occurred in Iceland or Central America. The blast was so powerful that it caused global climate change, with severe cooling and darkness around the globe. The ash and smoke from the eruption blocked out the sun, leading to several years of crop failures and famine. Several climatologists and archaeologists have recently worked together to shed more light on what happened between 536 and the following years. The grim tales recorded during this period are largely confirmed by research into ancient tree rings and ice cores. The individuals who lived then most likely knew less about the reasons for this darkness than we do today. In fact, there was extraordinary volcanic activity in 536. Significant sulfate deposits from this period were discovered by scientists in layers of ice. The Krakatoa in contemporary Indonesia, Rabal in Papua New Guinea, and other volcanoes in North America or Iceland are among the accused parties. It seems improbable that more than one of these volcanoes, rather than just one, erupted in or close to 536. In any event, a great deal of volcanic debris entered the sky, blocking the sun for several months. A volcanic winter, as this phenomenon is known, has occurred more than once throughout history. However, the winter of 536 was arguably the harshest due to volcanic activity. According to records, a Byzantine historian, Procopius, observed that some danger was brewing in the air when traveling with his boss in Sicily in the year 536. He was serving as a military counselor to Belisorius, one of the most prominent generals of the Byzantine Empire, as of then. Procopius described the sun produced light without brilliance, much like the moon, for the entirety of the year 536, and because the beams it cast were unclear or like those it usually releases, it appeared like the sun was under an eclipse. In other words, it was completely black outside. Of course, he wasn't the only one who noticed the unusual solar activities that occurred at the time. Research revealed that a Byzantine scribe named Michael the Syrian also described the occurrence. He said the sun went into eclipse, which lasted for 18 months. It shone for roughly four hours every day, yet even then, this light cast barely a weak shadow. Everyone agreed that the sun will never fully regain its brightness. The wine tasted like sour grapes, and the fruit did not mature. Furthermore, scientists relayed that in 536, the world was under the literal shadow of a non-metaphorical dark cloud that covered the entire planet. In addition, they later found evidence of a large-scale volcanic eruption whose ash likely played a significant role in the weather that resembled Seattle, but without rain, spreading ash and wreaking havoc on a global scale. Snow, Frost, and Famine Due to the ash cloud that blocked the sun, the conditions for living anywhere were immediately and drastically affected. In addition, the early medieval economies mainly relied on subsistence agriculture, which was conducted on a smaller farm that could only sustain one or two families. There were not many significant food storage facilities available in the majority of the civilizations at the time. Humans just created what they immediately needed. This economic system was highly susceptible to disasters like the 536 volcanic outburst. In August, there was snow in China, 
Intense droughts have affected Peru. Ireland experienced a famine right away. The apples turned sour during harvest because of the arrival of the frost. Following that, many crops failed, depriving many people of food. A failure of bread is frequently mentioned in various historical accounts of these years. In order to appease the gods, Viking noblemen in Scandinavia threw gold hordes into ponds and streams. The narrative of Ragnarok, which prophesies the deaths of the gods amid countless natural disasters, may have perhaps been inspired by the events of 536. In any event, the effects of a sudden dip in temperature struck villages and empires worldwide. The start of a period of global warming. The year 536 is often referred to as the beginning of the late antique Little Ice Age, a period of prolonged global cooling that lasted until around 660 AD. This cooling was caused by a combination of factors, including the volcanic eruption mentioned earlier, changes in solar activity, and other natural climate cycles. The impact of this cooling was felt across the globe. In Europe, for example, there were reports of snow falling in the summer, and the winter of 536 was said to be so severe that the Danube River froze over. In China, the cooling led to droughts and crop failures, while in parts of South America, the cooling caused a shift in weather patterns that led to prolonged periods of rainfall. First, the coldest decade in the last two millennia began when July temperatures fell by up to 2.5 degrees Celsius. If 2.5 degrees doesn't seem like much, consider how hard it is for our contemporary governments to keep global warming to 1.5 degrees. Seasons got mixed up, according to current accounts of the nearly instantaneous global cold of 536. The Justinian's Epidemic the empires of the 6th century initially fared a little better than the other nations' subsistence farms and small holdings. For instance, the imperial civilization of Chinese, Byzantine, and Persian were somewhat able to stockpile food centrally in granaries and send it to their most severely affected regions. Meanwhile, inhabitants of the Byzantine city of Constantinople eerily remarked that they could see no shadows of our bodies at noon. But another catastrophe struck the Byzantine and Persian empires in particular, making the middle of the 6th century the worst moment to be alive. A plague struck Byzantine Egypt when many people were already struggling to survive due to the poor harvest brought on by the volcanic eruption. The epidemic found a favorable breeding ground in this area as a large portion of the population was experiencing death and starvation or was on the verge of it and likely suffered weakened immune systems. Both the Iranian interior and the Byzantine capital experienced the rapid spread of the plague. The first significant plague outbreak in the Old World caused severe suffering for the two empires. The disease spread quickly over the Mediterranean region and the Middle East because of its complex trade networks and dense populations. Even the Byzantine Emperor Justinian contracted the disease, giving the rise to the term Justinian's plague of the illness. Some researchers estimated that a quarter of the population in the area perished during this outbreak. However, others gave much lower statistics. In recent years, it has also been evident through the discovery of Anglo-Saxon human remains from the 6th century that the Justinian plague spread far beyond the boundaries of the imperial territories. In any case, this was a major catastrophe. The Gothic War so how did people respond to these unfavorable tidings? Indeed, many prayers were offered to the heavens above, pleading for the sun's rapid return and the end of the scourge. Surprisingly though, life continued and significant events continued to take place, ushering in the early Middle Ages. Emperor Justinian had just begun his massive invasion into Italy to retake the western regions of the empire that the Goths had conquered at the beginning of the worst year ever, 536 CE. Notwithstanding the volcanic winter, his star general, Belisarius, was able to drive them out of Rome and Neapolis, Naples, before the year was up. The more superstitious members of the Goths ranks may have been alarmed by the gloomy portent that accompanied Belarusius' arrival in Italy, the sun's waning radiance. In any case, the ensuing catastrophes changed the course of the war. The Byzantine Empire was devastated and significantly reduced in population by Justinian's plague, 541 to 549. Still, the Goths took advantage of the situation and began a victorious counteroffensive that lasted for more than a decade. Nonetheless, the Byzantines strengthened their strongholds and eventually took control of the peninsula as the plague subsided. Despite being successful, this win was extremely costly. 
pestilence caused the struggle, which was then known as the Gothic War, to drag on for nearly 20 years, depleting the empire of essential resources while also causing it to suffer from poor crops due to the volcanic winter. However, the unfavorable weather affected the entire world, forcing whole tribes to leave most of the Byzantine borders. As it turned out, the migration period's second wave of migration erupted. Burgundians, Goths, and others marched into and gradually destroyed the Western Roman Empire during the first wave. New tribal confederations were now vying for control of the Byzantine Empire's productive lands, perhaps motivated by the poor agricultural output in their native countries brought on by the volcanic winter. The Birth of Islam for instance, only three years after what happened to be the Byzantines' complete victory over the Goths, the Germanic Lombards invaded Italy. The invaders quickly claimed most of the peninsula from the empire. The Slavs intruded on more and more land in the Balkans, marauding well into what is now Serbia and Croatia. As the Avars arrived from the Great Eurasian Steppe and essentially forced the Slavs further into Byzantine territory, these incursions transformed into a full-scale migration. Avars and Byzantines soon engaged in war, which lasted longer and cost more money than the Gothic War. For the majority of the war, Constantinople also fought against Persia. When it became clear that the late antique Little Ice Age's widespread consequences had been abundant elsewhere, the Byzantines' two-front conflict would, much later, show to have been a catastrophe. Due to the cooler temperatures, Arabia was more habitable and suited for cultivation. Not that the desert suddenly becomes a lush oasis, but at least some areas of the area, which had previously been dried earth, could now support cattle and grain. In just a few generations, the population increased enormously as a result of a sharp rise in fertility. As a result, Arabia became a population superpower quite quickly. The region now had the personnel to contend with the two great empires of late antiquity, the Byzantines and the Persians, fueled by its new ideology of Islam, which was created precisely during this time. Muslim troops had already taken control of Palestine and most of Syria a century after the worst year ever. Persia as a whole and many more Byzantine territories would follow. The Dark Ages the term Dark Ages is frequently used to refer to the early medieval period. The events of 536 and the years that followed, while thankfully no longer being used by most historians, seem to validate this name at least partially. Even the time's first inhabitants would have referred to the period as black in a literal sense due to a number of significant volcanic explosions. Some historians do refer to the 6th and 7th century CE as the Dark Ages, but this is not because of any assumed ignorance. Instead, it is due to the absence of sources, which makes it challenging to cast scholarly light on the time. Apparently, there were legitimate reasons why people were preoccupied with activities other than chronicling. Instead of a general collapse of civilization, they had to contend with a volcanic winter, a plague, poor harvests, and a lot of fighting. However, we should be careful not to see the entire time as one of widespread destruction, as we hope you have inferred from this essay. The Byzantine Empire managed to wage and win the Gothic War for two decades, for some reason deciding that the time was ripe to start it. Living conditions in Arabia and possibly other countries also improved as they traveled further south. In conclusion, despite the challenges and hardships of the year 536, humanity still persevered. Over time, societies adapted to the changing climate, developing new techniques for agriculture, trade, and survival. The legacy of this period can still be seen today, as many of the cultural and social changes that occurred during this time continue to shape our world. We have come to the end of this episode. We hope you enjoyed it. Drop your comment on year 536 being the worst year ever in the comment box below. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel for other informative and exciting episodes. Until we meet again, goodbye.